Welcome to Digital Asset News Clips, where we take the advancements in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we have a very uh, interesting and ambitious project called MELD. And MELD, what it's really aiming to do, if you think about it very simply, is it's trying to be the bank of Cardano, as this is another project being built on the Cardano ecosystem. So what really is it? Really what it comes down to, it's a decentralized loaning platform, decentralized Nexo, decentralized Celsius, whatever you want to say, this is what it is. So meld crypto fiat lend borrow stake. So let's just talk about exactly uh, what this thing is first. We'll talk about the uh, roadmap, uh, go over uh, the AMA, take a look at the actual white paper. And then of course, we're going to uh, do a little interview with the uh, CEO, Ken, where he can answer some of the questions. So let's just back up real quick and just take a look at, first of all, what actually is MELD. So first of all, the great website, meld.com, M-E-L-D.com. You cannot mess that up. It's pretty simple. I'll put the link in the description just in case, but uh, just so you know, cash loans, crypto holdings built on Cardano. Uh, Meld protocol is built on the Cardano blockchain, next generation blockchain delivering fast, safe and cost-effective infrastructure. Great. It's a decentralized platform. I think this is the most interesting part and uh, it gets a little bit uh, uh, complex, but uh, thankfully we've got Ken to explain it to us. But this is really what it comes down to. Um, let me just scroll all the way down. This is how it works. This is really what we need to know. First of all, if you want to take out a loan, you're going to use your cryptocurrency as collateral. So using the MELD app, the decentralized app, choose how much cash you like to borrow. Usually it's, it's 2x. So if Bitcoin, let's say Bitcoin is 50,000, it's not. And you say, I need $50,000. Great. Give us two Bitcoin. And then we'll put it into uh, the DAP itself or to the protocol. The smart contract will write the terms. They will give you the fiat. It is instantaneous. And then what's great about this is that there's two types of loans. Uh, one is the, ge the uh, general one. And one's called a genius loan where the loan gets paid automatically from the yield and from the transaction fees. Meaning you are going to only have to pay uh, the interest which is around uh, two to 3%, depending on what they actually come up with. So it sounds like it's gonna be 3%, uh, but the principal of what you what you borrowed, so let's say you borrowed 50,000, uh, it'll actually get paid back from the yield and the transaction fees. That's amazing. That means that there's no more, there's no more taxes. There's no more uh, you having to sell out your crypto and watching all the gains go away. There's no more capital gains. And then of course, also the interest that you are paying is tax deductible. I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry, but this is what it is. So you take out a loan, get your cash, you earn yield on your crypto, your crypto collateral is added to MELD's uh, liquidity pool to generate yield and work for you for the entire lifespan of the loan, whether that's one year, three years, five years, whatever they uh, come up with. You pay back the loan, make monthly payments that pay back the interest and principal, if you need to, of your loan. Once the loan is paid off, your collateral is released to you and you earn all the time. Regardless if you are borrowing, lending, staking, or holding, you're always earning yield from the crypto in your meld app. And this is the most interesting part because when you use a Celsius or a Nexo or whatever else, you give up your private keys. That goes to them and uh, they actually gain the yield. So for me, I took out a loan with uh, Celsius for a condo in Puerto Rico. And once I do that, uh, my Bitcoin, I don't earn yield on that. So in, in actuality, even though the interest rate was low at 1%, I'm actually missing out on the yield of 6.25% uh, plus the 1%. It's actually 7.25% I'm actually uh, missing out on uh, and if I just wouldn't have taken out the loan. But I needed the, needed the money for that uh, condo, and here we are. All right. So the meld, and this is the most interesting, interesting part, is that for... American citizens, we can't do ICOs. We can't do private sales. But because of the interesting prospect of what uh, MELD is doing, MELD has what's called an ISPO, which is an initial stake pool offering. It's new, unique. It's the first one to do it. Uh, that is community oriented and safe for all parties involved. To participate, you simply delegate your ADA in your YOROI. Let me say that again. You delegate your ADA in your Yoroi or Daedalus to the MELD staking pool. And 100% of the rewards go towards funding MELD. So they're going to keep the rewards that they gain from ADA, but they're going to airdrop you uh, MELD, which is a pretty good deal. 
uh, I think. Based on the amount of rewards generated and duration of your ADA is staked, you will be airdrop mail tokens on launch. We're launching ISPO, ISPO before the private sale. They're going to launch the ISPO before the private sale. Very important. All right. So here's the roadmap. We'll get to that in a second. Here's the team. Ken, he's, uh, he's been around for uh, a little bit. And uh, let's see. Ken is a serial entrepreneur, working in the space, 20 years of experience, digital transformation, proven track record uh, for Fortune 500 startups. Past and present clients include LTAC, GE, HB, Harrods, Hydra, Toyota. And if you know, on this channel, I like to talk about betting on teams. And here is Hi. He's bah, 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 AI engineering, started his career in C++, doing game development. During the last four years, he's focused entirely on developing trustless, decentralized systems and blockchain. And it's amazing because Hi has been on a couple of different projects that we've actually featured on this channel. So very interesting. Uh, Dave Lynn, let's see, 14 plus years in external internal audits, uh, many industries, energy software, various countries, uh, works in America, Europe, and Hong Kong, provides in Singapore. And then let's see, the CMO, uh, marketing, which is, I think all businesses need a great uh, a collection of uh, the actual person that can put things together, uh, they can actually be able to actually do it as far as like a chief technical officer. And they need somebody who can market to get that information out there. Let's see, Nordics, run several of the Nordics most prominent ex experiential marketing agencies, driving passion blockchain, core role CMO. Okay, so CPO, who is the chief operating officer? Thomas, security engineer, blockchain engineer. Let's see, who's this? And if you notice one thing, a lot of females on this team. Uh, that's good to see, refreshing, because it seems like the whole thing that we always see as far as like new projects, a lot of guys. Uh, let's see, uh, Toy, I think I said it right, Toy, is an accomplished software engineer, in-depth experience in both functional programming and software. She's pro projects at uh, Kikai, Sinling Technology, and Revotech. Holds a great information from Vietnam, okay and then some more blockchain engineers. Here's some of the advisors. Let's see, Amit. Uh, Amit creates evangelizes in the future AI and decentralization. Amit serves as the co-founder and president of the Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley Blockchain Society, executive chairman at Zero.ai and Rainfall, investor of joint ventures. And then some other people here, which we can get into a little bit later. James Bowater editor at large of Crypto AM. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So that takes care of the first part of pretty much how it works and kind of gets you a little bit of information as far as what is going on. Let's take a look at the actual roadmap itself and see where we're at in the whole process. So it is uh, June 28th, 2021. We are looking at uh, June, March, June, March, June. We're still looking at Q2. So they just got out the door, right? They announced it. Mel.com launched. They launched the ISPO Cardano stake pool one. They just launched it like a couple of days ago. This is super early. And then uh, they started it. And then the ISPO start is on July 1st, 2021. So they've actually launched it. And then it's going to start in two, three days. Interesting. Then in Q3, looks like they're going to actually accept Bitcoin, ETH, BNB, in the in the DAP itself, there's a security audit that's going to be scheduled, which is great, especially for them with smart contracts. You get a DAO audit in Q4. They're going to close the ISPO in Q4. So you're looking at uh, October, November, December. Uh, they're going to airdrop all those MEL tokens to everybody who contributes their ADA tokens into the ISPO. Uh, probably around November, December, somewhere around there, sometime in Q4. And then Q1, 2022. Fiat loan services start roll out, the governance voting is, it goes on, they're also going to have a debit card. So that is essentially wraps up what is going on uh, with the roadmap. Now there were some great questions and answers that came out of the AMA. So I'm going to jump over there real quick. So um, could you explain about MELD? And this was actually from, from Ken. He actually answered these questions. It says, uh, we created MELD to meet the goals of DeFi, trustless, decentralized, and non-custodial. If you don't hold the keys, the crypto is not yours. That's the interesting part here. You never give up your crypto to anybody. It's not a centralized finance. It's a decentralized finance, a true one. So the keys that you have are actually retained by you, which I think is the whole goal of cryptocurrency. And uh, yeah, so roadmap. They talked about the, the, the fair... 
uh, launch with the ISPO. Meld gets the ADA rewards and the delegators get the Meld tokens. So you're going to contribute your Cardano. If you, and uh, on this channel, this is not investment advice. This is just investment opinion. I will probably be contributing and uh, going from there. But remember, <clears throat> if you put your ADA and you stake it with Meld, you won't be getting ADA to yourself, but you will be getting the Meld tokens, which is before even the private sale. So uh, could be <clears throat> something to look into as you do your own research. Uh, just like a normal Cardano stake pool, you can undelegate anytime you want. That's the great thing about uh, Cardano. We here at DNews, we have our own stake pool uh, called DNews. And uh, what's great about Cardano, which is why we went with it, is because you can stake and unstake at any time. It's not like Ethereum where you have to lock it up for years like Ethereum 2.0. So just keep that in mind. And what's the use case? So again, if you want need a, a loan, you have crypto, you don't want to sell it. You tie those assets up in the mill protocol with a smart contract and you get up to 50% of the value in fiat. Uh, you can borrow against the crypto and in most countries borrowing and paying interest is tax deductible. So the end cost gets close to zero. And once you pay off the fiat loan, the smart contract is completed and you get your crypto back. But we don't take the crypto. It's only tied up in a smart contract. And then lastly, what are the present and future goals? Present and future goals of MELD. Our goal is to be the banking stack on Cardano. It looks like they're on their way. And we also see in the future the ability to bring liquidity from the bank side into crypto. I think that's the most interesting part, to actually bring banking into crypto. And it's not like they couldn't use the help. They're kind of circling the drain, as one may say. So that's the big questions that I, I garnished from the uh, AMA. Let's, um, let's break it down and take a look at what the white paper is. Now, this is a long white paper, just so everybody knows. About 56 pages. Luckily for you, we're not going to go over the whole thing. I'm just going to highlight some of the most important parts. Okay. Users have peace of mind because they keep the keys uh, to their assets at all times. Just want to reiterate that because it's very important. Meld features include low cost, high speed transactions, and more than 50 billion in Cardano as security. This is going to be uh, tied up. And uh, that is the part of the Cardano stake pool. So let's keep going down. We deliver two types of benefits to liquidity providers, a highly stakeable interest-based return for fiat loan liquidity, capable of replacing traditional fixed income sources and offer high yield income from meld vaults that act as an automated market maker. So this might really break this down. There's a nice little graph here. I think that really uh, kind of sums everything up. There's two, t there's two sides to every story as far as like for people who are doing uh, loans. First, there's somebody's the fiat lender. Someone has to lend you cash. And then there's you uh, who could be the borrower. Now, you could be either or, right? I could just be lending out cash and you could be taking the cash or whatever else. But here's how it works. So the fiat lender, he lends the cash, right? Goes, goes into the meld uh, dap. And then, of course, because of smart contracts, it goes right to you. That person will, uh, they will uh, get the interest for that loan. So whatever it is, one, two, three percent, whatever they decide. On top of the fact is that they're also going to get MELD's tokens as rewards. So you get like a twofer. That's pretty nice. And then, of course, for you, the fiat uh, borrower, you're going to get that fiat. You're going to pay it back. But uh, you also get uh, MELD tokens as a reward. Pretty nice just for borrowing some money. You're going to repay the loan or the line of credit, whichever one it is. And then your uh, collateral is returned to you upon repayment of the interest and the principal. And that's the big thing. So hopefully uh, that makes a little bit more sense as far as like looking at the graph. So moving down, little tokenomics. The total token supply is 4 billion. Launch is November 1st. Uh, the crypto assets are going to be supported as ADA, of course, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and BNB. I like that. Uh, what makes Mel different? You unlock it. Uh, you unlock the value in crypto without liquidating your position. So just so you know, if you ever sell your crypto, that's a taxable event. And of course, you miss out on all the potential gains. This is the, not like that. You actually get to great, you know, grab a little fiat for your crypto and then get it right back. And uh, if it goes up, hey, it works out pretty well. High yield for fiat liquidity providers, the, the uh, picture we just saw. Not a taxable event. Uh, and triggered. It's easy and fast, transparent, wrapped asset creation. I'll let Ken explain the wrapped asset part. All right, keep going. Macroeconomics. Um, this was interesting. I'm just going to go over this. Forecasts show that cryptocurrency market will surpass the market cap of gold during the next three years. That's interesting because gold's around 12 trillion. Right now we're at 1.5 trillion. Our highest was 2.5. 
In three years, sure, I can see that. Uh, let's see, keep going down. Let's see. Crypto rich but cash poor. How many of those are like are, are that? Let's see. And then, of course, we're, they're looking at the difference between uh, uh, centralized finance and uh, decentralized finance. There's a lack of trust. The current solution for crypto fiat loans are all centralized, just like we saw, we talk about. Uh, meaning the users must give up their private keys and hand over their assets to the centralized company. But with the smart contract, which will be going live uh, with the Alonzo integration uh, for Cardano in August, this code open source uh, allows users to review the code before they decide to interact with the protocol. And when I read this, I, the first thing I thought to myself is, first of all, I'm not going to read the code because I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm not a coder. But when I look at things in the future, I see different opportunities and I see like this right here for a new industry to emerge. Just like lawyers will look at contracts and go, yeah, this is good, this is good, or he changes or change that. I see like coders, they could kind of come over here and look at smart contracts and go, this isn't gonna work, this is gonna fail, or this is airtight, this is great. I see a new opportunity or a new industry, but that's just how I see things. All right. Uh, it's, it's non-custodial. Users who employ the mail protocol do not have to hand over the ownership of their of their uh, keys, which is very true. And the rest of this stuff is everything we just looked over. Crypto-backed loans. Again, how it, how it goes. User will deposit their crypto to Meld as collateral into the DAP protocol. Will then use the deposited currency to create a collateralized DAP position. A smart contract records the terms of the loan registers on the blockchain and upon KYC AML con confirmation, the protocol will execute a wire transfer directly to a bank account, which uh, takes apparently seconds. Users will be able to manage their uh, collateralized uh, position directly from the MELD DAP. This level of capital efficiency means MELD can offer more competitive rates and react to marketing conditions within seconds. So here's the thing. When you go for a loan at the bank, the reason why it's so much money is because there's so much overhead. You have to go through uh, the actual banking employee, they have to take a look, they have to run your credit check, they have to you know, go through underwriting if you're you know, doing loans for like uh, mortgages, and they have to actually pull this data and everything else. So it's very expensive and very timely because there's so much over it. But with, with dApps and uh, blockchain, that's the whole point of eliminating the middleman, and that's where you save money. So to finish this up, if the collateral value, and we're talking about liquidations as you go into it, if the collateral value falls to uh, the lockup term of 65% or stays above 50 for more than three days, a margin call happens. So if you have a lot of, uh, or if you are borrowing and then it comes back and they say, look, the, the value of your crypto has fallen below X, you're going to have to either uh, collateralize more or you're going to have to pay off the loan. So you say, oh, whatever you want to do at this point. Well, I'm just going to add more Ethereum or Bitcoin or Cardano or BNB. And then uh, the same thing happens that the, if the uh, lockup value reaches 75%, if it reaches 85%, a liquidation event is triggered where the collateral is converted to USD. Okay, got it. And then uh, this is the big thing, the genius loan. Meld will be offering a self-repaying loan. The customer collateralizes their crypto and takes out a loan with a slightly higher interest rate. And we'll ask Ken about that. The customer only needs to service the interest on the loan they can, but do not have to pay on the principal. How do they do that? Part of the yield generated by the collateral goes towards paying down the principal on the loan. How do they do that? Based on our models, it will take between three and six years to pay 100,000. This product is able to offer users self-repaying loans by capturing some of the trading fees generated by the DEX aggregator, aggregators utilizing our liquidity providers for swaps. So, that is essentially the big thing about what is going on with this whole um, project. It's to me, it seems very ambitious. I see how it could work, but there's still some questions I have as far as like the math breaking it down. Where do the percentages come from? How is the yield? And uh, you know what's going to go on with this banking sector that they talked about before? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Ken in here, and he's going to answer someone's questions. So let's jump right in. Okay, so welcome back. So we just took a look at everything that has to do with, with MELD and what is going on. It's a pretty high level stuff. It's a simplistic um, overview of what's going on, but it's an ambition, ambitious project. So uh, thankfully, I've got somebody way smarter than me that can help me decipher what's going on. This is Ken, Ken Oling. He is the CEO of MELD. 
and Ken has graciously uh, accepted us to uh, talk over some things and go over just a couple of quick uh, tidbits. So Ken, thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Nice to be here, Rob. Thanks. Yeah, I like your office. Yes, it's air conditioned. <laughs> That's what we're just talking about. So Ken, so the big thing to me was, I see what, what, what we're doing. I think people at home understand it. But the big thing is, let's, let's go down the road of a little bit of math. Because we take a look at, at the loans. And, it, and to me, it looks like you guys kind of want to be like um, the banking sector of Cardano. And we already talked right. about why you want to build on it, which is great. But let's go over some math. So I'm going to share my screen right quickly. Let's go over this. So in the white paper itself, there was a, a segment here on page 16. And it says, uh, they can, and we're talking about principles, they can, but you do not have to pay on the principal. Part of the yield generated by the collateral goes towards paying down the principal on the loan. Based on our models, it will take between three and six years to repay a $100,000 loan, depending on the market conditions. Uh, so here's what I was gonna ask. Ken, let's do some back of the napkin type of work and tell me how that would work. Because if we're talking about a $100,000 loan, how do we get that paid off with what's going on? And then there's a little piece here, which talks about trading fees generated, generated by the decks, the liquidity providers for swaps and other things. So right. walk me through it. So the, the basic principle is that you, when the collateral is tied up into a smart contract, we then take that collateral and we put it into the meld vaults. The meld vaults operate as liquidity pools, and then we're able to get a very high yield on those liquidity pools, primarily because the liquidity pools are, are uh, paired up against uh, stable coins, as well as the liquidity pools are also very, very deep. So we're looking at anywhere from five to 10% return on those liquidity pools. So we then take that and we can compound that on a regular basis. So we're able to get very, very high yield over this period of time. So Ken, real quick. So when we talk about like locking up in the vaults, I know in the beginning it's going to be meld and Cardano, right? Are we just talking about the meld token or the Cardano? No, token? no, no. So we're, we're, when we launch, we'll launch with Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, ADA or Cardano, um, BNB and meld. So those That's will be the ones that we launch with as and well as the, the, the meld stable coin for a dollar and the meld stable coin for Euro. Awesome. So we're talking about five to 10% yield and you're talking about compounding that. We're not talking about APY. Are we talking about APY? Are we talking about compounding? Cause these are our liquidity providers. Are Correct. Providing. So we're talking about, we're talking about what is the time frame of, uh, of compounding that? Yeah. So we're talking about compounding that on a weekly basis. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Just want to make, just want to clarify. Yeah. Okay. So let's do this. Let's say someone comes in, they go, you know what? I'm going to put a little bit of a, I, I need a hundred thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it. And of course we want to do, we have to two exit, right? So if I want, let's say Bitcoin's, let's keep it very simple. Bitcoin is $50,000 today, which is not, mm -hmm. but I want $50,000. Great. Well, give me two Bitcoin. So right. we take, so we take two Bitcoin. What's going on with that Bitcoin now? Uh, to, to repay that loan as far as uh, the genius loan. Yeah, so, so then the, the, the Bitcoin is converted into a uh, wrapped Bitcoin on the Cardano network, an MBTC. Okay. And then we take that and we put that into a liquidity pool. And that liquidity pool is what's called a single-sided liquidity pool, which allows us to then pair it against various different coins, depending on whatever the, the APY is going to be highest for, whatever the banding in regards to the AMM is set for. And so then because we have this flexibility to come to take the bit rep Bitcoin and then swap it against various different other coins, we can maximize the kind of APY you're going to get in a similar way to the, the way that uh, BadgerDAO does it. Yeah. And then we're able to get a very high yield. And part of that yield then goes towards paying the, um, the uh, principal on the loan. Gotcha. And what's, what's great. I, I think what's great about this is that, so you have five to 10% and then like, so that part of that would go to pay for the loan, but then part of that goes to pay for your fees and everything else. And of course it's a business, correct. We need to all make a little bit of money on, on the back end, Correct. Correct. But, but the majority of it goes to pay the loan and to pay the stakers as well as to pay the treasury. Right. Because one of our, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. One of our big focuses is to work very hard to try and minimize 
the amount of liquidations that happen on the platform. In order to do that, we have to build up a very large treasury that allows us to be able to do things like hedging our position in the case of market volatility. And so we want to try and build a system that is as fair as possible to minimize the impact of the kind of flash crashes you saw four weeks ago. Yeah, we've seen a ton of those. And I think we'll see them again because it is a little volatile. And then real quick for, for the interest, I know in the uh, some of the literature talked about 3% uh, as far as as like the uh, the rate for the interest. Uh, and then it said for the genius loan, it might be a little bit higher. Can you tell us, talk to us a little bit about the actual rate itself for the loan and what it would so the be? Rate, the rate isn't finalized yet. The rate is part of our risk model. So we right. have two oracles that operate in the system. One oracle is the bank oracle that connects the bridge between the, the protocol and the bank accounts. And the other is the risk oracle. And so the risk oracle is under heavy development right now. And then we will use the risk oracle to define the interest rate for the loan uh, based on a lot of different market characteristics, yeah. as well yeah. as the type of loan you get. So like in the case of the genius loan, right now it'll be 2% higher than a normal loan yeah. in order to be able to sort of balance out the math. And then in the case of some of our other products, we have, for example, crypto, crypto to crypto loans that are zero or negative 1% interest. So the interest rate is going to vary a lot. And we're not sort of, we're not comfortable yet in regards to how the interest rate and the, the risk model sort of fit together yeah. um, to be able to tell that story. So there's always a happy medium somewhere, right, Ken? Yeah. All right. So we got that. And then talk to us. So we talked about the liquidity provider part and that'll help to pay down the actual loan. And then the trading fees, I guess, would be another aspect of that, you know, as things get traded, you know, as far as like, like the meld, I guess you can kind of generate some type of revenue from there and then also pay back the loan. It looks like. That's where, that's where the majority of it is going to come from. The majority of the loan paying back mechanic will come out of the meld vault. So it's not so much connected to what the, 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 the interest you're paying on it is. I mean, a little bit of it is, but the majority of it is us taking that, you know, 2X collateral and using it in these very, very deep liquidity pools that are specialized, that have special strategies to maximize the APY out of them. And then from there, that is where you're going to pay back the genius loan. Makes a lot of sense. Okay, so that, that part makes sense. Now, the next question then would would kind of go into uh, as far as like the fees themselves. So take mm -hmm. a look at, this was in the AMA. So this question, and it, it talks about banks, which I think is, it, it's, a, it's a fascinating prospect to bring the traditional finance in the old world into the new world. So this question was from the AMA we already covered. What yeah. are the future and present, present and future goals of MELD Labs? And you state, we also see in the future the ability to bring liquidity from the bank side into crypto. Give us just a general overview of what that would look like uh, as far as like meld bringing those types of things in. So, so this was kind of an aha moment for us mm -hmm. because we spend a lot of time and we have a lot of experience working in crypto. But when we really started looking at the bank side of it, um, the way that meld works is we get the the fiat liquidity from the fiat world we're not converting crypto into fiat we're not sort of moving the actual crypto and converting it so we get liquidity providers in the real world from various right. different institutions but we're a decentralized protocol and we're creating an oracle that connects to bank accounts not a bank account but any bank account from any bank so and what the return for the liquidity provider is, is it's high interest return, right? Right. They can actually, they'll get on their, on their liquidity that they provide, they'll get several percent interest. Right. This is something right. banks can't do today, right? Your savings account is not giving you three, four, five percent interest. It's yeah. giving you 0.01 percent interest. So with our bank oracle we can actually connect to banks and their bank apis and we can give them a mechanic for them to offer their customer high return savings accounts. And in, in exchange for that, they're able to bring in liquidity and feed liquidity to the protocol. So think of the banks out there as part of the protocol network for the crypto space, because that's what the Oracle does, right? The Oracle brings all the bank transactions onto the blockchain. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know what that, that sounds like to me? It sounds like giving the banks a second wind. 
We've seen Very a 30, much. you know, we've seen a 30% reduction in actual brick and mortar banks close because there's no foot traffic anymore. I kind of see the same thing as like like with malls. Malls in the 80s and 90s were huge because everybody would go there. Now with the advancement of, of Amazon, people shop online. Now what are malls being, being uh, transformed into? Well, you can go to a mall, you can have some kind of experience. You can take a look at what the different products and, and, and feel it and touch it, all those things. And then you can order online. So this would be like a big boom for the banks. It would almost be like, it would almost be like if Blockbuster partnered up with uh, Netflix and goes, you know what? we will do those things and we'll have uh, this part and your part and we'll meld the best of both worlds. Got it. And then lastly, let's talk about this ISPO, this yeah. uh, initial stake pool offering. Cause I think this is the most um, revolutionary thing. I think this is one of the first ones to ever do it, right? It is the first one ever done. It's been yeah. proposed, but we're the first ones to actually do it. So let's, let's walk through that process real quick. Well, first of all, tell us about We'll walk through the process, but tell us about the regulatory hurdles you had to go through to get there. Because me and a lot of people who are watching this channel, America, we can't do no. any kind of private sales. We can't do an right. ICO, but this looks like we may be able to, or, or are going to be able to actually get in before even the private sale. So yeah, so the, the, the idea here came from how to create the most fair sale that we could possibly come up with. And we know the problems that are sort of surrounding this. And so I had this eureka moment where I was, I just came up with this idea, wow, you can actually use a Cardano stake pool to do this. And so then I, I reached out to my partner uh, or co-founder, Hi, who's the technical side, and I pitched it to him and I thought I was absolutely brilliant. And he said, no, it's already been proposed. <laughs> but it was shut down for legal reasons. I was like, yeah. okay, well, I'm not that smart, but hey. hey. So I went to our law firm, we're based in Singapore, and I asked them, can you evaluate this and see if this is actually legally doable based on Singapore? Because the, the other people that have tried to do it, they did it in the US. Um, and so they evaluated it. And, you know, Singapore has a much more mature um, crypto regulatory system in place than, than the U.S. does right now. Mm -hmm. And so they came back and they said, yes, this is definitely doable. And they gave us a formal legal opinion uh, specifically as to why it is doable within the current Singaporean framework. So we're using that as our baseline decision making process. Um, and our law firm specializes in crypto regulatory systems, and they've done lots of ICOs in the past. Uh, so we're using that as our starting point, and we're now having our first, the first ISPO ever to launch um, is being launched on the Cardano network, and it's being launched by us um, on July 1st. And so anybody can stake. And then with their stake, they keep their ADA, and they're able to earn rewards of meld tokens and those meld tokens are then airdropped to them at the end of the ISPO, which is in December. Yeah, and that's one of the great things I like about staking on Cardano. We have a couple of different uh, stake pools uh, called DNews. And what's great about it is that Cardano does not leave your wallet. And that's the most fantastic part about it. With Ethereum, you have to lock them up. There could be 2022, 2000, who knows? Uh, we have no idea yet. But right. uh, th that's the great thing about uh, just having ADA right there. It never leaves anything. So it's a little bit safe. It's a lot safer, actually, if yeah. we're thinking about those things. So, so, so real quick, Ken, walk us through that process. Because I know like on the website, let me share my screen so that everybody can see it. On the website, meld.com, which is a great website, by the way. Meld.com, super simple. When we click on join our ISPO, what do we get? So first name, last name, email. We send the message, which I've already done myself. Mm -hmm. And then what happens after that? So you'll get a you'll get a reply email giving you an update as to what's happening in regards to the ISPO. You'll get links to our medium articles on what an ISPO is and how it works and what to expect from it. Yeah. And then from there, you'll get another email that will explain to you exactly what you're supposed to do in order to delegate it. Uh, we have a video that's coming out later today. Uh, showing exactly how to delegate and how easy it is on the on the Daedalus and on the Yoroi mobile app. Um, so you can just do a couple of clicks and you can delegate right away. Perfect. So, Daedalus uh, and Yoroi. Awesome. Yeah. So we're trying to make it as simple and as convenient as possible and also as risk free. Yeah. And like you said, you know, if if you're unhappy with meld after two or three months, yeah. you don't feel like the progress is enough, you can just vote your way out and sort of 
undelegate and then everything stops. So yeah. we're kind of beholden to the community and that's exactly what you want out of these fair launches, right? You want a very tight relationship to the community. Perfect. Yeah, you're making my job pretty easy because I was going to do uh, the own, because usually what I have to do is I have to show everybody and do it myself so people can know. But if you guys are going to do the video, fantastic. Yeah. And then I will probably uh, also be delegating to this because this sounds pretty uh, interesting. That's for sure. We already have three and a half million ADA delegated and yeah. we haven't even started yet. So the community has already started voting. And honestly, we're sort of super honored that people are that trusting in what we're doing and that enthusiastic about sort of what we're trying to build yeah well it makes it so easy because like i mean again with cardano it's like you when you stake it it's not like anybody has control of your private keys it stays in your own wallet and daedalus or your roy comes over you're like you don't like it you're like i, I need it now you just undelegate and off it goes exactly. so ken thanks for coming on uh any last words of wisdom for the crypto investor out there um, I would just say the, the reason why we're here is to innovate in the financial space. And this is the big goal of DeFi. And we have really bought into this idea of really, you know, aggressive innovation. And we believe that MELD is one of the participants in that community. And we're going to be able to contribute a lot. And we really hope you can join us. It's looking like a pretty great project. Very ambitious. Ken, thanks for coming on. Thanks. We appreciate it. Everybody, uh, questions below in the comments. Let's jump back. Okay, so I hope that made a lot more sense. Uh, I want to say, Ken, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. So what Ken is going to do is uh, he's going to send over that video. I will put that in the link in the description below, which will show you how to, if uh, if you so choose to, to delegate your Cardano for uh, this project. Again, on this channel, this is just uh, investment opinion, not investment advice. I recommend that you go over everything we just talked about with a fine tooth comb. Take a look at the website. Take a look at the AMA the white paper and then do your own research to really take a look at is this a project that you would like to uh, get involved in again uh, not investment uh, advice just investment opinion to me uh, i will probably be getting into this and delegating some of my cardano uh, to move this project along so that's it so look if you like this uh this video give it a, a thumbs up give it a like subscribe we talk a lot about a lot of different uh projects that are coming up uh, and then go over the advancements of crypto and digital assets on this channel. If you're looking just for news, just follow our, our original channel, which is Digital Asset News, which is our daily news section. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for sticking with me. I appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one.